as each part does its own special work, so you have special work. Everybody have a special job to do, but everybody don't know that special job. Everybody don't even care to know that special job. I shouldn't say everybody. Some people don't care to know that special job because it takes work. You know dealing with people is work? Yes, it is. Because y'all know dealing with yourself is work. <laughs> and you, can, you know if there was, you couldn't stand two of you. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Yes. I was, uh, I, I tell you, I was uh, eating breakfast this morning with my wife. We were sitting there talking. And I kind of, I kind of got grabbed my head like this, and I put my elbows on the table, and I did one of those numbers. And I said, <laughs> Holy Spirit said, "What are you doing?" <laughs> it shook me. I said, "Oh, you're right. You're right. I can't. I can't go there. I can't go there." See, see, you, you have no idea what's on my plate. Mm -hmm. I know y'all say I, I'm so busy dealing with my children. I got all of y'all. Plus your children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you guys are some grown folks. And you know how you're dealing with grown folks. Some are just stubborn. Wow. They're going to do it their way. And, you, and a pastor doing all he can to get them moving in the right direction. They're just fighting and kicking and screaming like little children. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, says, okay, God. I said, I, I, you know, I don't know why. Okay, okay, okay. Every now and then, you know, you, you want to go there. Oh, Lord, this is. But thank God for his grace Amen. on my Amen. life. Amen. I've been doing it for 25 years now. Still here. Still here. <laughs> Still here. <laughs> Amen. As each part does his own special work, how many of you want to know your special work? Yes. I turn my head while you're lifting up your hands. Go ahead, lift your hands up. So I won't see you. Because you're going to say, well, well Pastor, well, I'm going to challenge you then. If you, if you want to know your special work, I'm going to challenge you. You're going to either tell the truth or you're going to lie. Because, you know, sometimes some people quick to say, yes, I will. But you know in your heart, you won't. Did I call it? <laughs> As each part does his own special work. I, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting past this W-R-K. That is a four-letter word, isn't it? Watch this, watch this. It helps the other parts grow. Isn't that something? So you, you, it's not all about you. <laughs> isn't that something? It's about everybody else in the body of Christ. <laughs> so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Love isn't love until it is what? Manifested. You can say I love you all you want, but if there's no action, it is no love. That's right, Pastor. You know, let me say this, and I'm going to move on. I'm trying not to get bogged down into this. But watch what I'm about to say. Another reason why things are not working in people's lives the way it's supposed to be working is that love walk. Watch what I'm about to say. Now watch, watch this. Everybody know the word says God is love. love. So you create it in its likeness and in its image. So that means that you were created in love. Watch this. So that means that for you to operate properly to be able to receive and walk in God's blessing like you want to, you have to walk in love. love. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Every time you step out of love, there will be pain and suffering. Every time. Every time you step out of love, every time you step out of love, something is being taken away from you. Wow. 
in your physical body because you weren't wired for anything else but love. And for you to operate properly, your physical body and everything else operate at an optimum peak, you have to walk in love for it. You know, I was thinking about, they say we only use 10% of our brain. The reason why you, you use only 10% of your brain because you don't walk in love. Wow. See, when you walk in love, you walk in God. Mm-hmm. When you learn how to do that, then you start using more of your brain capacity. Then you'll be able to put things together before you weren't able to put things together because you have this old ugly attitude, honor you get offended every time someone, say watch them about to say, cross you. Oh. Well, and some people say, well, that's what you're supposed to do, right? If you want to, you can do it that way. But every time you step out of love, you suffer. You suffer yeah. It affects you negatively. Because those are toxic thoughts. Absolutely. Okay, I'm, I'm, I, that's, another, that's, that's another teaching. But I want, you to, I want you to understand that, walking in love. And when you don't watch what I'm about to say, and when you don't serve one another, you're not walking in love. If you, don't, if you don't work, if you don't work what God has called you to do, your special gift, you're not walking in love. Okay. How could it be? Because you're not serving anybody. You're just serving yourself. That's selfishness. That's not love. So now, that's another thing that you have to, okay, I need to, lim- I need to eliminate that out of my life then. Well, we, all, we won't walk in this love perfectly. We understand that because we're still in this flesh. But there are some things that we can start changing right. to make our life better. About walking in love. Okay. Okay. See, that's another teaching. Yes. That's just, I'm, I'm meditating on that, okay? I got about 50 in my heart right now. Okay, so now, let me, uh, Jeremiah, I'm going to read this real quickly here. Jeremiah 3.15 says, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what the gift does. Again, don't look at Roy, the man. Now, you know, I have a part to play because what I need to do to prepare, stay in God's presence, worship, prayer, study, and all of that. But when I stand before you, get your eyes off the flesh and keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen. But, okay, now, I want to say this. But, Remember, there's an anointing on my life just for you. You have to decide, I want that today. How badly do you want it? What, what are you willing to do to pull on this anointing out of me so you can get what you want? Because God placed within this gift that he's given you everything that you need. Now, we don't understand the Holy Spirit is involved in all of that, but I'm talking about the the gift of the pastor to the church. You can receive whatever you need through that gift. Recognize the anointing. Realize that your pastor is the person whom God has chosen as a teacher over your lives. Remember, over you, over your lives. This is the person whom God will use to help take you to your inheritance. The one whom you must learn from and follow. (laughs) You hear what I just said? Learn and do what? Follow. Follow. Say it again. Follow. (laughs) Your pastor is the vessel through which God will pour out the anointing in your lives and release your purpose and destiny. It'll help you to find out why you are here. And I'm going to put a plug in for our, our servants ministers class. Every other Monday, Pastor Roy and Pastor Sandy, we're teaching that to be able to help you to become the leader that you're supposed to be, to develop your gifts, to find out what your gifts are, and to fulfill your purpose. So what that means is that when you get to heaven, stand before uh, the judgment seat of Christ, you will not have any excuse why you didn't fulfill your purpose. <laughs> I- I'm moving. I'm really moving because I know that kind of 
See, y'all really, y'all didn't even say amen or anything on that. I mean, I'm, I told you I am moving. First Peter chapter 4 and 10, the Amplified Version. Yes, I'm here to develop leaders, to make leaders out of all of you, not followers. Leaders. Okay, let's look at this. As each of you has received a gift, who's he talking to? You guys sitting in these chairs, right? As each of you has received the gift, so you have received the gift. Amen? Amen? And that's what, this is the Holy Spirit speaking to you through Peter. A particular spiritual talent, a gracious divine endowment, employ it for one another. And that's that love walk again. See, you, you, know, you know, you're always thinking about other people and not you. See? Because you're dead. You both be crucified with Christ, but nevertheless, we live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in us, right? And you live by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you, right? So we reckon ourselves to be dead to the, to the flesh, but, but alive in the spirit, amen? And it, it said, employ it, talking about the gift or plural gifts, for one another as befits good trustees of God's many-sided grace, Faithful stewards of the extremely diverse powers and gifts granted to Christians by unmerited favor. You don't earn it. You, you, don't, you don't deserve it. It's a, it's a free gift. When you got born again, the gifts came in. Now understand, when people are born into the world, they are born with talents and abilities. That's how good God is. But now... When you get born of the Spirit, that's when the gifts of the Holy Spirit comes in. They don't come in before you're born again. You have to be born of the Spirit to get these special gifts to be able to help one another. So, so everyone has a, a, an ability and a talent and endowment. Everyone in the body of Christ has some kind of gift different from other people. So we can help one another, the body, to grow. That's what the church is all about. See, there are gifts in here that this church needs, but they're just sitting in the pews and not doing anything. So what that does is the people that need your gift, they're being deprived of that gift. So what that means is that now, you, now what's happening, you're not walking in love. So now there are things in your life will not work properly because you're not walking in God. Now, isn't it simple? Okay, so the next thing, so watch this. And sometimes I have to be careful because I really, I mean, I really, sometimes I go for the juggle and just put it in a manner where you say, Pastor, you didn't have to say it that way. <laughs> let, me, let me say this. Let's just say you're dealing with issues and you, you can't get the breakthrough. And you still want to continue to live this life you've always been living, not thinking about other people not trying to find out what your gifts are, trying to find out why you're here, not want to serve anybody, not want to use that gift to bless the people sitting right next to you. Let's say you continue to live that kind of life and you're still trying to get the breakthrough and you can't get the breakthrough. Well, common sense to tell you, you need to start somewhere. Yeah. You, see, you know it's not God, right? That means that you're not receiving something right. that you should have. So common sense to tell you that I need to walk in love then. Because I walk in love, I walk in God. Then things start turning around for me. So, so now, with, with, watch this. With that, you won't be praying as much for yourself. Because you know the problem. The problem is you. So the only prayer that you need to pray is that I need to change. But that's a good prayer for everybody. <laughs> we all need to change. Including your pastor. I'm still working on me.